and I, and I, and I don't like to use that term, the older pastors in the association, because I have a group of young men out here that are looking at me and saying, uh, speak for yourself, buddy. Um, I was with your brother-in-law and at a Bible camp just a couple of days ago and they took a picture of the pastors who were at this Bible camp. Which brother-in-law? I got three that are pastors. No, they went, yeah. Um, Craig. Craig. Craig Benson. And he's just a couple of years younger than me. And in this picture, there is this young-looking guy with a full head of dark hair. And then there's this older-looking guy um, that looked older and had gray hair. And if they took a picture of the back of his head, you would see that he was bald. And unfortunately, I was the older-looking guy. So um, that's where I'm at. I have deeply appreciated Raynard for his work, for his quiet leadership, and for his quiet spirit of faith and independence on Christ himself. And Rainer, we would like to have you come and share with us at this time, please. And maybe by about, yeah, 11.35, 11.40, you'll get a few, if that's okay. okay. Fine. Oh. <clears throat> well, thank you, uh, Marty, for the kind words. And uh, when I'm here too now, I think about uh, when I was uh, asked to here, I've been gone for just about 47 years. <laughs> so uh, it's familiar to, to be at this pulpit, but um, the, the audience uh, looks different. And, um, but uh, back when I was here, uh, the senior pastor was Reverend E.S. Leek, who lived at Wall Bay. And, uh, and, and I was so much younger than he is, and now, now I'm the veteran pastor. So it's, it's uh, interesting how that goes. <clears throat> I, um, I want to say something, too, about the, uh, the church building. Uh, originally, there was the, uh, the square church where you're sitting, where we are. And then uh, sometime, I don't know when it was, a parish hall was built. I would say about uh, 100 feet in that direction. So there was a big gap between them. And during my time here, it was decided to, uh, to move the parish hall and attach it on the on the west side of the church, and that was done. It wasn't done because of me, but I certainly uh, was in favor of the project. And you can see, originally there was just the, the corner there, a very small entry, and now we have um, uh, the nice uh, foyer and uh, that area there, so that uh, for funerals and weddings and confirmations, uh, all the crowd could be uh, accommodated. I don't know how they did it before that. And then on the far end was the kitchen of the parish hall, and uh, that's where I had uh, my confirmation classes, including uh, my last one was uh, Mike and uh, Al Twinneran, uh, two husky fellows. The Twinnerans were wrestlers. I don't, did you wrestle at all? Yes, I did not. Mm -hmm. I didn't get in on that. But uh, I had some good, good wrestlers. Uh, about uh, Trigby Dolly, I'd like to say too, if you've been down at headquarters, one of the buildings is the uh, Trigby Dolly Hall. Uh, named after him, and I, I take it that it was because uh, he was a good promoter of the uh, uh, AFLC when it started, and he served in many different places, where out in Montana there and uh, other places. So I think he is recognized because of that, 
uh, by the naming of that hall. And uh, this was his first parish. He came from uh, his father, Oli Dolly, uh, was uh, a student of Sverdra. And uh, Trigley himself uh, knew the elder Sverdra. Uh, he, was, um, he was 15 at the time of uh, Sverdra's death in 1907. And um, so he didn't study under him, but Sverdra uh, spent some vacation time uh, out with the Dollies by Aiken, Minnesota, Farm Island Lake. And so, uh, so he knew him. And now, um, I, I, this is a lot different from what you've been hearing before today, about, um, and there's too much I in it, but I'll uh, share some things. I was in the uh, New Effington Parish, Bethany, Scania, Ferkingston, and Nidaros. And um, uh, I was going to, to leave that parish, but uh, there was going to be a new parish formed with uh, Tabor, uh, Hope, Saren, and the later on Buffalo Lake came into that parish. Uh, but that wasn't going to happen until Pastor Beek retired in, in the fall. And so um, in the meantime, I moved up to Hatton and Buxton and later also a third group in Portland. And then I received a call from uh, the new parish after Pastor Beek retired. And I should say too that uh, it's mentioned about uh, Tabor being associated with the uh, LFC and the AFLC. Uh, AFLC. The LFC was started in 1897, Tabor in 1902. And it uh, came into the LFC at that time. And then at the time of the merger in 1962 and 63, um, uh, Tabor was one of the early congregations. Well, let's see. I was in uh, up in North Dakota and uh, received a call from the new parish. It was interesting that that, uh, that call had been formed before I went up into North Dakota. So that was the intention of the people, that I would be, be, um, be called Tabor, Saren, and Hope at that time. And um, I arrived uh, in, uh, in Roslyn, that's where the parsonage was located, on November 15th. I had my first service on November 17th. John Fitzgerald Kennedy was assassinated on November 22nd. And uh, the next Sunday when I came out here uh, for the service, I was told that uh, Jack Ruby had, had uh, shot and killed Lee Harvey Oswald. So that was happening at uh, that time. I was installed by Pastor Richard Munseth. He was the vice president of the uh, AFLC, and um, <clears throat> I don't remember anything of what he said except uh, one thing, and that was that uh, this was Tabor, and he said that he remembered as a young fellow back home when they had the prayer meeting, apparently uh, maybe it was all in Norwegian, but he remembered somebody praying at Vikunaha uh, and Tavurstun, that we could have a, a Tabor time or experience. And uh, I take it to mean that when uh, Moses and Elijah had, had left and Jesus was there alone, that they saw Jesus only. And uh, that whoever was praying was, was praying that uh, the attention would be uh, centered on on the Lord Jesus. So that's all I remember from the installation, but uh, <laughs> I, I would have thought too. And, and when I was in the Holy Land, I 
I had the opportunity to take a picture of Tabor a Mountain. We don't know exactly where the transfiguration took place, but, but I think it was at Tabor. And um, I took a picture of it, and, and it's out there in the um, entryway if you look for it. Um, so then, um, Uh, as we um, as we started here at, at uh, Tabor, I want to say that uh, there there was no merger problem. In some communities, there there were problems, and there were some hard feelings. I I wasn't aware of any of that in the uh, neighborhood. And we were permitted to carry on our work as we wanted, and uh, I think we were respected for it. And uh, I followed here at Tabor, uh, Pastor Beek, who had a 35-year pastorate, a long pastorate, but uh, there again I have to say that there was no, no problem in that. I think in the ELC they have a policy that uh, when somebody's been in the parish for a long time, there should be somebody interim before someone else takes over. But uh, there, wasn't, uh, there wasn't any problem with that. I, I, I would say that uh, I, I had to encourage the lay people to make uh, uh, some decisions that they probably hadn't been making before. Because Pastor Vick probably uh, decided a lot of things uh, by himself. But, uh, so I encourage the, the people to uh, get in on those decisions. Not to say anything uh, bad about this. Uh, this congregation, I would say there were, there were uh, many youth, many youth at that time. I was fortunate in that. And um, one of the things, uh, uh, mentioned about a lot of the choral groups, but um, we started uh, having some tours of, of the youth, of the youth choir. I wish we had started that before. And um, we went uh, quite a distance. I know that we were up at Grafton, North Dakota, but uh, some places in North Dakota, Minnesota, and South Dakota. And uh, those were those those were a blessing. And uh, WMF delegates, when there was at the annual conferences and uh, in our district and so on, Tabor was always well represented. Sorry, I don't see anybody of, uh, of that group, but uh, you know there could be six, seven, eight uh, women at these uh, functions. So uh, they were very good. At getting out. And uh, the same with Bible camp at Pickerel Lake. I'm sure that many times there were more young people from uh, Tabor than from other uh, parishes or congregations. So, um, and I would say that the church was central in, in the families. Now I know we've got somebody from Hope and Saren and Buffalo Lake backgrounds and I don't want to take anything away from you, but I'm uh, talking about uh, Tabor particularly uh, today. And we had uh, special meetings, that's something that uh, in the Lutheran Free Church, uh, there was a lot of that, to have an annual uh, series of meetings. We had, um, uh, we had some of the LAM evangelists here, and uh, they, they said that uh, during the series of meetings there should be a, a lunch served one evening. Uh, I suppose it could be served more than that, but to have one, one evening of that. And then we would have a book display where people could, uh, could buy book, good books if they wanted. And um, I would say again that our congregation was respected. 
And uh, now during all of this time, I was serving half time. Um, I was editor of the paper, so this was considered a half time position. But I, um, I never really thought about that. I tried to do the parish work as I should, and I had to make the deadlines for the paper. And uh, it, it seemed like it uh, worked out. And I, I didn't have any complaints from the people that I wasn't uh, putting in the time that I, I should hear. And then I received the call from um, AFLBS. And uh, I certainly debated that and, and prayed about it. I had a policy that uh, I would make a decision in, in two weeks' time. Felt I had to do it in that length of time. And uh, one day I felt like I should stay, the next day that I should move. Uh, but eventually I did accept the, uh, the call. And uh, I'm, I'm glad for that experience. Didn't always get the sleep that I needed. <laughs> but um, but uh, somehow it uh, somehow it, it worked out. And uh, the letter of call didn't say anything about doing any teaching. I thought I'm just going to be dean of men. But uh, just before I was to leave, I found out that they were expecting me to uh, to teach and uh, do some teaching. And uh, fortunately, I had some pretty good notes on Philippians. And so I could, uh, could start out with that. But uh, during those uh, five years at the Bible school, I certainly was in contact with, uh, with uh, several hundred people. And it's been uh, good to run into uh, former, former students now and then. But the congregation is um, is free, as we've uh, as we've heard, under the Word and the Spirit. And uh, also, I know the guiding principles. There is uh, something about uh, working together with others uh, in, in the work. And I felt that uh, Tabor was good in that way too. As I've mentioned, they they were good at sending uh, people to. Uh, other functions in the district and in, in the uh, uh, whole church. And then um, I think I'm going to um, I quote myself to it. <laughs> like, uh, this is from uh, the Free and Living Congregations, that, that book, page uh, 24. Over a period of years, the debate went on, often in a spirit of goodwill, but sometimes not. And this is talking about the coming merger. I have a great admiration for those who dared to speak up in annual conferences to express their concerns. The majority at last prevailed, and a merger with the uh, ALC was consummated. Those of us in the minority decided to continue a fellowship as close as possible to what we had known. I have always had great love and affection for those who stood together and dared to walk the old paths. And end of quote. And uh, I know he couldn't be here today, but I think of uh, of uh, Sherman Carlson, and he's one of the last of the greatest generation. And uh, I hope to uh, to go and say hello to them. My knee wanted to go in the other direction. Do we have any questions? Does anyone have any questions or comments uh, concerning Reader's presentation? Do you have any com comments to him? Questions? I'd just questions? like to make a statement about Pastor Hugo and I have I am so amazed at 
with his comment, how he was a half-time pastor and, and a half-time <laughs> editor, and his editing, I mean, that, that ambassador, when I think of the numbers, it was 24 a year, yeah. out every two weeks, and now it comes out once a month. Yeah. And he was pastoring here, and that, I believe it was 20-some pages each issue. It was, it was, yeah. it was very long. I don't know who the man did it. I just, I, I'm totally in awe. And for 26 or 7 years, he was the editor of the ambassador. I mean, just an amazing feat. Yeah. That man was an iron man and, yeah. and served out here too. So yeah. I just can't, I have such respect for him. Yeah. For the years. Yeah. Well, the, the Lord provided. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and thank you. I am, anything else? Anything else? Yes, Alex. I have a question about your experience with special meetings at Tabor and w whichever congregations you'd like to talk about because we continue on in Thief River Falls with special meetings and, and it's always awesome and a joy to gather together and have a speaker come in, yet it's probably common in any AFLC church that still has special meetings that you just wish that more would come and it's I feel like it's just declining, but I've only been in the congregation in a couple of years. And, and so I'm just wondering, what was your experience with special meetings and who came to speak? Where did they come from? What was, what was the uh, reaction like in the congregation? Well, I, I, thought, it was, I thought it was good. Uh, as I mentioned, we use the LEM evangelists Lutheran evangelist, yeah. Yeah. but uh, there are also others. My brother was here. Yes, there are always uh, there are always those that don't come, okay. and so it's interesting that people will not come to hear these special speakers, but but they'll come to hear the local pastor. So. It shows the importance too of, of uh, Sunday by Sunday preaching. Yeah. But uh, for those who come to these meetings, it's always yeah. refreshing. Yeah. Anything else? And this question about the Bible Church. Did that? What happened to that? I mean, did it? Did it go? But the it, it, didn't, it didn't go in immediately, but uh, eventually it ended up there. Okay. Anything else? Yeah, uh, I, I apologize if I was a part of the reason we didn't get much sleep those first years at the Bible School. <laughs> Um, he's not here. I wonder if some of it was due to my brother-in-law. Um, but we won't talk about that any further. I remember some episodes. Um, all right. I, I have one comment. Kind of interesting. But if you see the flow today, we, we see the theory. That was my presentation. The theory of, of a free living congregation. And then we see a pastor's perspective. What does this mean for, for a pastor in, in ministry? That was Alex. And then with Rayner, just simply the, the record of, of the theory lived out in the life of a congregation. Out here, sitting on a hill in South Dakota. The, the, the here, God, was at work. And sometimes you can look at it just as a series of WMF meetings and Luther League meetings and Sunday schools and all of that there. And if you check off everything on the calendars you go through each week, you can look at it that way. But the other way you can look at it is just simply through all of that, it was a gathering called together by the Spirit of God of people who were set free and made alive by that spirit.
through the gospel. And that's not a small thing. That's a wonderful thing. And, and I appreciate Rainer in reminding us of how something so ordinary can be so special. And I deeply appreciate it. Thank you very much. <coughs>